I'm now just embarrassing myself, so I'm going to stop talking and bring out your next guest, who is not going to stop talking ever. That's what she does, and she's so good at it that she has a one-person show uh, premiering in the Vancouver Fringe Festival this September. Uh, really looking forward to that. And you know, I've known Mary Lee for many, many years, and she does many things, wears many hats, uh, and does a bit of stand-up comedy, and a bit of this, and a bit of that. Uh, but when she started doing storytelling, I was like, oh, you're home. There it is, right? You know, and like, and it's the best thing to to uh, watch somebody find their thing. So I'm really excited to uh, have her share her thing with you tonight. Please welcome Mary Lee Stevenson. Right, it's over to you now. I decided, go, what do they say in human resources, put, to play to your strengths. Of course, the trouble is you make up your own mind what your strengths are, you could just be so fucking wrong, it's just not even funny. But, so what it is is, I, I call the act as it's evolving, tightrope talking. And the idea is that you give me a word, a word, just a word, and then I take a few seconds and I make a story out of that. Okay, so that's what it is, so I'm gonna ask y'all, one for a word. If I have to say one word I don't want. I don't want after that dance scene, I don't want humiliation. <laughs> okay, I, I would say it was not my strength. <laughs> I'm, happy, I'm, I'm so happy that I'm covered with that thing. Uh, and, and it's, it's like this, I can say, oh fuck, can I see Morgan? Yeah, there, she's bending like this now. She's bending. But anyway, so I want a word. Armadillo. Armadillo. No, well, I, I'm, I'm going to take armadillo. It was right in the line. I grew up in Florida, in Orlando, and this was an Orlando where, like, the streets were not paved. There was vacant lots around. You had to watch out for the rattlesnakes in the back, and the man in the back, next block, every once in a while he'd go out hunting, and he would bring in this deer. And have y'all ever seen somebody skin a deer? No, no, it's not. Well, we actually were spared part of it because he had already cut out the guts. And so then they looked quite clean and he had it hung up by its Achilles tendon. They said, well, that's what you do if you're like a real hunter in Orlando, Florida, right? And so it's just hanging up. We still talk about it now because as Southerners, we always talk about things. Uh, we tell stories like around the table or, you know, grandma's uh, upside pineapple upside down cake or something. But uh, he gave us each a leg and see, you can pull the tendon, right? And see, so you have this leg and you go, like that with the hook. Children do those kind of things, right? And so you're thinking armadillo. But armadillos, like they were frequent in Florida, because all they do is like dig into the sand and hide themselves. And you know how they're those layers? They're like echinoderms, right? We're up on echinoderms, are we? And um, <laughs> they have those different kind of, Carp carapace. And, and, and we would see them, but mostly it was like possums, you see. That was nature in Florida, like dead in the road, right? D-O-R, dead on road. And then the same with, me, with armadillos, because they never made it. They were really, really slow. But armadillos, you will be happy to know, and some of you will know this, because some of you are musical. I'm just going to look at my watch, because if I fuck up on the time, they'll never speak to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I did it in Havana, and I thought, sure, 30 minutes, it was 50 when they began flashing me. But so we returned to armadillos, and armadillos, now they have a more elegant life in a certain sense. If you've ever been like to Latin America, and they have all those mariachis play and all that stuff, and then they have the big hats, they will always have this tiny little guitar ukulele type thing, and it's, a, it's an armadillo, you know? I mean, that, that back goes curved so beautifully, right? And so then they put that, oh, it's sad, really. I, that's what it's come to, you know? Dead possums and armadillo ukuleles. But, so that's gonna be one of the stories. I'm moving right along here. This is, we're working, thank you. We're working on a music cue, but I think that we've given up on the music cue. <laughs> How many times can you hear Amy Lou Harris? I don't wanna talk about it now. She doesn't even breathe when she sings. Have you ever noticed that? She just like this and something comes out. Okay, now I wanna, I'd like, I'd like another word. Pride. Pride. P-R-I-D-E? 
Okay, this is good. Has nothing to do with me, of course. You can't, you can't tell I'm gay as a Christmas tree. Right? <laughs> but in fact, uh, unlike when I was growing up, because like I'm 73 now, right? When I was growing up, it was like the world's worst, and you were really close to becoming those statistics of the extra high statistics of suicide for, for gay kids, right? But it's different now in many ways, even though the stats are still high. But I have uh, an, a nephew who has five children, and they range from the twins at seven to then a 10-year-old, a 13-year-old, and an absolutely brilliant 16-year-old. Well, they're all brilliant. They're relatives, of course. <laughs> some of them even more so. And so I get this thing on my phone the other day, and, and it's from uh, Stevens Pass where they go skiing. And, and <laughs> it's Pride Day at Stevens Pass. And so the next time I see, and the, and the little guys, they've got these sort of hula skirt things with, with, uh, with flags, you know, <laughs> uh, rainbow flags. And then they've got other kinds of paraphernalia, gay paraphernalia. And so then when I go to visit them, <laughs> I think, well, here we got from seven to 16. What does pride mean to them? You know, what does it mean? It doesn't mean start terror like it meant to their granddad. <laughs> So I say to the little guys, you know, what's pride? You know, what's pride? They said, oh, everybody loves everybody, everybody loves everybody, but we can't stand these cool skirts, they're stupid. <laughs> and then, then I say to the 10-year-old, what's pride? And she said, oh, everybody loves everybody, and all the boys are named Dustin, <laughs> and all the girls have short hair. <laughs> say the 10 year old, or did I just say the 10 year old? Yeah. Thank you so much, it's part of the aging process. So, <laughs> I say to the 13 year old, boy, well what's, what's pride? You know, what are you thinking of pride? He says, you mean people like you? <laughs> he, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we sort of passed over that, how would it be? <laughs> it's like my mother said, don't create an issue where there isn't one, you know, don't dwell on it. So then I go, <laughs> To the 16 year old, and as I say she's smart, but I gotta tell you, it's another dimension. This kid is so smart that in grade 10, she gets letters literally from Harvard and, and Princeton and places asking her to consider them. You know, like, it's like, it, but it's actually sort of like Donald Trump. Why do they know her grades? You know, and, 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 and all that. So I say to her, I said, well, what, you know, what does pride mean to you? She says, gender is fluid. And there are lesbian, gay, uh, bisexual, and she lists them all up. I can't remember, but she lists them all up. <laughs> and she says, and furthermore, I am an ally. I have belonged to the Gay Straight Alliance in my middle school. I say, that's nice, how is it? She said, all they do is talk about sex. <laughs> and I don't know if they're even doing it. I said, well, maybe that time you get to the Harvard GA, G Gay Straight Alliance, they'll be able to get themselves organized. You know, that's all. So, I think I got time for one more song. A uh, song, excuse me. You really don't want that. I mean, if you thought the dancing was bad, you don't, you don't want to think about the scene. Although I did sing in San Diego's only coffee house for a year in high school. Yeah, with the wee three trio, with those old, you know, those old dirge songs and the early Smothers Brothers or whatever they were, and the Kingston trio, painful when I think about it, painful when the audience thinks about it. Too. So we can do one more, one more word. iPhone. I beg your pardon. iPhone. iPhone. Yeah. <sighs> the thing is that that they are computers. And I don't like to dwell on age, but there are differences in how you learn with time, right? Which we could return again to the dancing guy. <laughs> I won't. Um, but I got a job in retail, because you know a senior limited income, and I get this job in retail, and, and I'm, it's at Wild Birds Unlimited, and I happen to be an expert on birds. You know, like I've been to the Galapagos all these times, I've written all these books, show me a bird, I know, okay. But I'm thinking, great, I got a job here. I can talk about birds, but you had to use that cash register. But it wasn't a cash, you know, like you go to a grocery store and they say pearl, pear, and they pear. You can't do that in, in retail. 
right? And so it was the most painful experience. They were very nice to me, but I felt so stupid. I just felt like when I was learning, I don't want to repeat this dancing thumb, but it was the same feeling of absolute <laughs> stupidity, right? But on the other hand, and I'm avoiding iPhones, already with Messenger, I'm getting no messages from people saying, cut me off, you know? <laughs> It's bad enough with caller alert on phones, because when I was having a real bad mental health time, you can't imagine I would have, but then I had this really bad mental health. I would always call people because I was so worried, but they had caller alert. So then I had to go up to Starbucks and ask some teenager if I could use their phone and then call my friend. So I'm all for iPhones because I know it helps communicate. But I just wish there was an easier way. And that is the end of my time and I appreciate it so much.